Well, good morning, everyone. All right, well, let's get started. You found Dory. <laughs> Keep on swimming. <laughs> well, now you won't forget my name. So how many people have heard me speak before? Oh, many of you, welcome back. And those of you who have not, welcome. It's great to have you. I'm super excited to be with you today because we are going to be discussing a topic that is so important to all of your success. Compensation is one of the things that a lot of people struggle with. And I'm here today to shed some light on it for you and to arm you with some strategies that you can go back and actually implement. So I only have about 25 minutes with you though, so I'm gonna have to move fast. I know you're gonna want a lot more information after I'm done, so you can go to our booth. We're in 225, or I'm gonna be outside for a little bit too to answer any questions. So either way, I'm here to arm you with all that information. So Alex is gonna make me do my own in introduction, but first let me tell you what I'm going to cover. And the first thing we're going to talk about is are the biggest challenges that people have with their financial health, their financial business. And then we're going to talk about pre-preparation steps. I'm actually gonna give you a step-by-step -step on how to create a performance-based compensation model. You might wanna write this down, performance-based compensation model, because you shouldn't just pay your team anyway, you should pay them on performance. So we're going to dive into that a little bit more here in just a minute. And then I'm gonna wrap up with some mistakes to avoid. So the biggest challenges that I see as I work with people and travel all around the world is really the financial health. One of the biggest things I find is that many people don't even have a budget, which is pretty sad. I don't know why they don't, but they don't. The other thing I find uh, often is that the compensation model is not based on performance. They just pay people flat rate in most cases. I'm gonna be general here for just a second. As a matter of fact, I was doing a private coaching call not too long ago. This is a brand new client for us. And she called me up all excited. I just found a nurse. I said, great, tell me about her. And she proceeds to tell me. I said, all right, so how are we going to pay her? She's like, well, I offered her $100,000 a year. I'm like, for what, showing up? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what we want to do. And those are some of the mistakes that I find often is that we just pay people for just showing up instead of paying them on performance. And that's what, again, what we're going to go over today. And then the other biggest challenge is retail sales. That just kills your business. It's either you have a, just a little corner somewhere uh, with a cabinet that's locked, God forbid somebody might touch a product, and we don't have expectations and consequences for our team to really promote retail, and that's, that's sad to me. You're leaving so much money on the table from the retail aspect of your business that I'm gonna show you in the next here few minutes on how to actually compensate them on all these aspects and you wanna be able to pay them their true worth so they can perform and get paid what they're actually worth. And you know, one time, uh, I, this is an answer I give everybody. My team always wants to have a raise. They keep asking me for a raise. Here's the phrase that you should tell your team if they're asking you for a raise. You need to say, you know what? I wanna give you a raise. And here's how you get it. You help us reach this target and you'll be able to make more money. So we should never tell our team, you can't have a raise. You can have a raise, you just have to earn it. And that's the part that many times we don't really perform. So all these challenges lead to that low profit. And frankly, you went into business to make money, not be broke. I have clients when they first start working with us, they're making already a million, $2 million. I shouldn't say making. They're bringing in a million or $2 million a year, but they're not getting to keep much of it. And that's sad because you went into business to be profitable. You didn't just buy yourself a job, more stress, more responsibilities. You, you went into business as entrepreneurs to make money, and that's really what we want to focus on is making money. So everything I'm gonna share with you today falls under the four S's. 
And the four S's is what we teach all of our systems under. The four S's are your systems, your strategies, your structure, and your solutions. So every aspect of your business should fall into one of these four S's. And once you get to those four S's, those lead to the fifth S, which is success. And that's what we all want, is it not? Absolutely, that's what we want. So I want to introduce you to Denise, Denise Dubois. She has two locations in New York, one in Albany and one in Saratoga. I first met Denise at a conference like this. She heard me speak and she came up to me and she has been in business for, when I met her, it was 27 years. She just celebrated her 30th anniversary. Can you believe the way she looks? She looks amazing, doesn't she? <laughs> so she's married to a plastic surgeon and they have huge locations, 10,000 square feet. And she has over 100 employees. How many people here have 100 employees? She's the only one, right? She's amazing. But you know what? Though she had the 100 employees, she had the two locations, she made millions, but she didn't get to keep a lot of the money because she didn't have the structure, the systems, the strategies in place. As a matter of fact, Denise belonged to the club. Got a minute? Imagine 100 people coming to you saying, got a minute? <laughs> Could you imagine how much she got done? Not much. So what we did is we restructured her own business, created a new model to help her have that performance-based compensation model, and now she has an extremely profitable business. You know, when you first start the business, it's easy, it's easy to grow, right? It's just like an airplane you're trying to take off. You gain momentum. It's very easy to grow fast. But when you've been in business for 29 years, 30 years, it's a little more difficult. Do you guys agree, right? Yeah, so she grew her business last year by 15 after being in business for that long, generating millions of dollars because of the structure and the system and the compensation model. So what we want to do is go over now the five steps, the preparations to actually doing your compensation model. So, uh, you know, Alex told me to do my own introduction. Now we have a room full of people. So just to give you a quick little thing about me, I've been doing this for 19 years. I've traveled the world, seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. And every time I come back home, I would take all the problems all of you have and come up with systems and structure and strategies to actually uh, help you implement. We test them. We make sure they worked. If they worked great, we keep them. We teach them. And if they didn't, we toss them. So my, my whole thing is uh, I'm based in Daytona Beach, Florida, and I live also in Orlando part of the time. I have one son. He's 20 years old. He's going to be actually 20, no, uh, the end of the month. He's going to be 21 years old, and he's in Australia studying biochemistry. So thank God he took after me. <laughs> ha ha, come on. <laughs> Yes, so um, let's go into step one. So that was a little bit about me. And if you want to learn more, you can always come and see me later and, or Google me. You'll know all about me. So let's start with how do we set up a compensation model? Well, the first thing you want to do is assess your ratios. Find out what is the overall cost of your comp compensation now. So for example, out of each dollar that comes into your business, how much of it goes to operation? How much of it goes to product cost? How much of it goes to compensation? And how much do you get to keep? And that ratio should not be more than 40 cents on the dollar to go to compensation. If we can do it at 30 cents out of that dollar, that's even better. But when you find out your financial ratios, it's very, very important to make sure that you have enough profits. You want to make at least 15 to 20 percent profit if you're going to be in business, right? So if you're doing a million dollars, you want to make at least 150 to 200,000 in actual profit. That's where you should be. So that's the first step you need to take is see how much you're paying out now so we know how we need to adjust it. The second step is you need to come up with your targets. I'm amazed how many people don't really have very detailed targets for their business. You've got to know exactly how much you want to generate in revenue for treatments, how much in revenue for retails, how many memberships you need to sell for that reoccurring income model. All these things are just such of importance to your business and your health. So then what you want to do, once you have your target, then we want to set the compensation based on what targets our teams actually reach. 
So that's your second step. I hope you're taking some good notes, right? And then the third step, we want to go into our budget and determine, okay, by department, how many people we're going to see by department and how much revenue we want to generate by department so we can set up our compensation model. So you must have a budget for your business for the whole year to know exactly what you want to do in January, what you want to do in February, March, and so on. So I see actually Dr. Lehman sitting there. I spotted you. <laughs> so I just came back from Austin. Uh, I met Dr. Lehman actually at an AM spa boot camp. Uh, how long ago was it? Six months ago? Six months ago, I think. And uh, he liked what I was saying, and he knew I could help him. But like most people, procrastinated a little bit, right? So then he finally decided, OK, I'm going to come to the Leap Ahead seminar. He brought his team members. It's a three-day event that we do. And then he joined our mastermind group and our platinum member. The reason I'm telling you this, because I just found out yesterday that after I left from Austin, I was there the first week of January, the end of the first week of January. We went through this whole process. We set up the budget. We came up with the targets. And we decided how much he should grow his business. So that target was 25% over what he did last year. The team was flipping out. They're like, how are we going to grow 25%? I'm like, you can do it. You've got so many possibilities here that you're not tapping into. We implemented the daily success planning meeting where you explore all the opportunities that you have so you can maximize on it. And yesterday, they told me that they reached their 25% uh, target, but also they did 15,000 15, more on top of it. Isn't that incredible? Good for you, Dr. Lehman. I am so proud. I am so proud. Stand up, so take a, take a bow. <laughs> Thank you. I, no, it's you implementing. See, I'm nothing but the guide. I guide you, and then it's up to you to implement and make it work. Those are the kind of people I like to work with. So if you want to implement and make a difference and reach those numbers, you can do it. You just have to have the process in place, get the buy-in from the team, and then you're able to actually get the results that you want. So it's really so important to do. All right, so the third step is you have to decide whether you want employees or you want independent contractors. And if you ask me, if you really want to run a good business, you should have employees. You don't want independent contractor because it's like the wild, wild west. They just do whatever they want. They come and go as they please and all that. So you definitely want employees, and you want them, again, on that performance base. So the fourth step is identifying the ranges. So before I got into the spa, medi spa industry, I ran a resort in Orlando. <clears throat> so I was in the hospitality industry for 18 years. And in the corporate world, every position in your place has a value. So your guest relations person has a value, your injector has a value, and so on. So you need to know what that value is. So you shouldn't just pull a number out of a hat on how to pay people. You shouldn't just look at your competition and say, oh, well, they're paying their person this much, so I'm just going to pay them that much too. No. So you need bases. You need a starting point. You need to figure out what is the low, medium, and high to actually pay someone. And if you go to websites like uh, HR websites like salary.com or whatever, you can punch in your zip code, and then you can find out how much each location is value, each um, zip code and area and the position is valued at. And that's where we're going to start. We're going to start from that, and then we're going to base our compensation model based on their performance. So if they're a, a C player, they're going to get paid the low end of the income. If they're a B player, they're going to pay the middle, get paid the middle. And if they're an A player, they're going to get the high. So when we're interviewing someone and we're making a position offer, we can tell them, working with us, you can make anywhere between this and this. You decide. You decide. Wouldn't that be a much better way to interview and hire someone than just saying, OK, here's $100,000, join us? Right? Yeah. 
So that's the, the last step you want to do is a principle that we teach, and it's called volume per guest. And I have to tell you, once you start measuring your performance with a volume per guest, you are going to just totally transform your business. Uh, there was a book, uh, Good to Great, by Jim Collins. Did anybody read that? It's an oldie but a goodie. And what he discussed is how companies went from good to great. And one of those companies was Walgreens. And Walgreens, the reason they became the number one chain of drugstores is because they, they value their clients based on how much they spend with them. So you need to copy this formula. And it's super easy, but it's so powerful. So to figure out the volume per guest, you can go and just see how much did I spend uh, how much did people spend with us for, let's say, a year? You could do a year today. And then how many clients did we see? And you divide your revenue by your number of clients, and that's going to give you a volume per guest. It's going to give you an idea of what your handshake factor is. And you need to do it for both service and retail. And retail. By the way, if you want the presentation, you can just stop by our booth, give me your information. I'll be more than happy to send it to you. So the volume per guest is how we're going to rate our compensation, you guys. So I just took you through this process very quickly. Usually I spend a whole day discussing this, so I'm doing it very fast. But what you want to do now is go figure out what your volume per guest is, is now, and then we're going to set new targets. And that's how Dr. Lehman was able to accomplish what I just told you, 25% growth. And he's been in business for a while. To grow 25% in one month, that's pretty exponential to me. So, pardon me? me I know it made you happy. <laughs> so, and we have a lot of success stories like this of people implementing this concept, you guys. But once you figure out your volume per guest, then you can actually do your compensation model based on that volume per guest. So how we're going to pay people is the more the volume per guest, the higher the volume per guest is, the more money they make. The less the volume per guest is, the less money they make. So just to give you a quick little example here. Uh, so I have some time. I'm doing good here. All right, so the guest relations, let's start with that. I'm just going to show you quickly how to pay them because they will totally transform your business, the guest relations. As a matter of fact, we do this exercise during the Leap Ahead seminar where we call your places, and I've never seen jaws drop as much as when you hear what your guest relations team actually answers the phone and how they answer it. But usually they're the lowest paid people. Usually we take a college student or we take someone who has not much experience in managing that area and we just hire them and we don't really give them what they really need and we hope that they answer the phone properly. And that's pretty sad. To me, that's like the most important position in your place. And how you should pay them is a mix. You should, it's what I call a compensation mix. No one should just get paid an hourly rate. You should pay them a mix, a variety of ways to earn money with you. So what I'm going to do is I would go to my guest relations team and say, OK, we need to generate $100,000 in business for treatments. We need to generate another $75,000 or $50,000 or whatever for retail. And you help me achieve that. I'm going to give you bonuses. Now, I know a lot of you went to the legal sessions. By the way, if you did not yet, you really should, because you do want uh, to have a safe environment for not only your clients, but also for your team and your business. But what you want to do is go by the compliance that Alex's um, company and uh, the, the attorneys that were teaching you things, you have to be careful about fee splitting and things like that. But it's all on how you present your compensation model. So what we like to do is discuss bonuses. That's how we pay them, all bonuses. So once you set the target for the guest relations, then what you do is you try to hire them with the lowest amount hourly but then give them the opportunity to make a lot more based on achieving the targets. You guys, just by implementing this strategy alone will totally transform your business and the way those phone calls are being answered. So instead of now somebody calling up and saying, oh, how much is your Botox? 
Oh, it's $10 a unit. Oh, thank you very much. Click. Now they have a stake in the game. They're going to doing those phone calls a lot differently because by them helping you reach the targets, they're able to earn more money. So again, if I'm interviewing someone for the guest relations position, I'm going to say, OK, your base is $12 an hour or 13 whatever, wherever you are. If you're in San Francisco, of course, their minimum, or in California, the minimum wage is much higher, Washington State. So use your head. I'm just giving you the model, right? I'm giving you the model. So you would say, OK, I'm going to pay you this much an hour. That's your base. I'm going to give you some benefits. I'm going to let you have some treatments. Don't just give treatments away to give treatments away, even though Allergan or whoever is giving you free products. It should all be part of your rewards and recognition. It should be part of your benefit package. <laughs> this is very important. And then you give them bonuses on the revenue target for treatments, revenue targets for retail. So now, instead of making $12 an hour, they could make 13, 14, 15, or if you want them to make up to $20 an hour, it's up to you and you base it on those ranges that I told you about a minute ago. So what is the value of that position on the low, medium, and high and work your numbers backwards and you'll be able to come up with your compensation model. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Yes. Yes. So that's one way to start implementing a performance-based compensation model. So that's for your guest relations. Now, the other group that you need to do, let's take the aesthetics, for example. And, you know, going from a spa to a medi-spa, you're hiring a lot of estheticians that were used to getting commission, and now they're shifting and they're coming to you, and now all of a sudden we have to pay them a little bit differently because we can't pay commissions. So what we want to do is pay hourly, and then again give them a compensation mix with bonuses based on the volume per guest. So I have a client up in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, Dr. Lazaro. He's a plastic surgeon, and he has a Medispa. Amazing property. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I actually met them also at the AM Spa conference, one of the boot camps. And uh, Linda, the wife, runs the Medispa. And their facial volume per guest was only $80. That's how much their estheticians were averaging per facial. That's just like, that's like a massage envy facial, for goodness sake. Not a, do we have any massage envy people? <laughs> Let's talk about them. <laughs> that's, that's $80. I mean, what, what kind of facial can you do for $80, for goodness sakes? So needless to say, they were not making a lot of money. And these estheticians were with them for years, making $20, $25 an hour. So by the time you paid them $25, they had a extremely expensive benefit package, insurance, IRAs, you name it, 401ks. So they were not making any money. So when I went on site to train them, and I'm wondering why they're not upgrading facials to like at least 120, 180 if they have a hydra facial, right? And they're like, well, we can't upgrade. I'm like, why can't you upgrade? Well, that's because we're giving them everything in that facial. I'm like, are you out of your mind? You can't just... You can't just do that. So that's why the VPG concept is so important, because you want these people to be able to get what they want, the results that they need. And when you make it performance-based, they're going to be able to do more of these things. So it's very important for you to do that. So volume per guest is key. And then the other way to measure with the bonuses is your key performance indicators. I don't know about you guys, but if you don't measure, you can't improve. You've got to measure your key performance indicators. And retention is so important. So the VPG, of course, without saying. But then retention is key, because you work very hard to get one client, but how do you get to keep them? How many of you have memberships? Oh, look around. What's up? Oh my gosh, you guys need to come and see me. Reoccurring income is where it is. Reoccurring income, you guys. Memberships make you, your retention go crazy. 
because then you don't have to do the a la carte mentality and then hope and pray that somebody's going to come back, right? So you do that. Anyway, retention, uh, your retail volume per guest, referrals, that's another thing that you should really measure. We don't even ask for referral. I go as a secret shopper to many of your places. I get my facials, facials, injectables, or whatever. And rarely does anybody ask me to send my friends or family or colleagues. It's crazy. But if we don't have a target on it, and we're not measuring it, and we're not rewarding on it, then it's not going to happen. You guys agree? Yes. Yeah. So you really need to do that. So I'm just giving you an idea here of what the uh, aesthetic bonuses should be. So you come up with your target for your facial. So if they hit 100% of the target, how much in bonus am I going to give them? Now, I left the percentages off on purpose because, again, I'm giving you the model because the percentages can vary depending, again, on how much you're paying them per hour and where you want them to be on the low, medium, and high model. So again, if you have more questions on this, I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. So mistakes to avoid, just don't pay anybody a flat amount. That's just not a good thing. Always measure your VPG, and you just got to give your people uh, the benefits. Give them a nice benefit package so they can really help you grow your business and they can stay with you. Because again, it's not just the employee retention, it's not only the client retention that's important, the employee retention is just as important. So I'm almost, I have a couple more minutes. I want to give you a couple of gifts. Uh, I want to give you my book. I have a couple of books, actually. And I'm getting ready to publish a third one. And I'm doing a session this afternoon, by the way. If you want to come, it's about being an influen influencer. But if you want to either text the number uh, on the screen that you see or go to the website or come to our booth, We'll be able to scan your badge, and then you'll be, I'll be able to ship a book for you. It has a lot of great insight in it to help you grow your business. So here's my information. The other thing I'd like to offer you, if anybody wants to change their compensation model, we can set up a strategic planning session and help you set up a, a performance-based one. Hope you found this beneficial. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless, and until next time, stay inspired.